Hey, kittens, welcome to Sunday, July 17th, 2022. And you are in for an extra special treat because it's Cubs Out Loud Drag Race. It's Woo! tea time, hunties. We are discussing episodes nine and ten mm-hmm. of All Star Season Seven, the All Winners Season. That's right. We will be discussing uh, the two episodes that have recently taken place, which is Dance Like a Drag Queen and the Kennedy Davenport Center Honors Hall of Shade. That's a mouthful. Yes. So I think that it's one being of the said, longest titles they've ever had. <laughs> yeah, I think it is the longest title they've ever had. Uh, for those of you that are new to this, hi, welcome to the show. My name's Gary. With me is my ever fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome. And we do this little thing here with Cubs Out Loud. This is an offshoot. We've been doing it for several years now. This is actually, I believe, uh, let me look at this real quick. Episode Ooh. 144. Ooh. So the finale in two weeks when we discuss it will be episode 145 of Cubs Out Loud Drag Race. Specifically. Yes. So, girl, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. Yeah. But uh, so we're going to dive in and we're going to give our thoughts about these two particular episodes. I have a funny feeling we have some specific things we want to discuss. Mm -hmm. And as a spoiler in the post show, the patrons are going to listen to us on predictions (gasps) because we are down to the last two episodes. Gas. (laughs) Clutch your pearls, girl. (laughs) <laughs> I I, I, did. Oh, I forgot my pearls. Oh, imagine that. Oh. <laughs> so with that being said, are you ready to jump into the first uh, section? Okay. Mm-hmm. Racers, start your engines and may the best legend win. All right, so it's time to put the pedal to the metal. We are going to discuss our overall thoughts as well as any of the following serves, swerves, or nerves. So, serves are props to your mama, like recognition of something positive you did. Work, Swerves. (laughs) Yes, work, bitch. Swerves. Mm. No, no. No, (laughs) ma'am. No ham. No, dog. (laughs) Yeah, no. That's. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's not a good thing. And then we got nerves. And baby, nerves can be good, but nerves can be bad. So, nerves are like bitch. Like, bitch or bitch. <laughs> very much so. Very much so. All right. So, uh, David, why don't we get started? What are your thoughts? Sure. What do you have? So these two episodes were kind of fun. And I will admit that. So overall, just in general, like a general statement, like these were some, this was, these challenges were very different and very new mm-hmm. and very unique. And I was kind of all for it. Mm-hmm. Um, in a sense. Now, yes, you could technically call the roasting challenge not a new thing, but it was a turn a bit. It was a bit of a turn mm-hmm. because it wasn't just like it wasn't like the Ross Matthews, Michelle Visage, um, uh, RuPaul roast. It wasn't like someone like a judge. It was you are intentionally roasting the other girls. Mm-hmm. Like that was that was the that was the intent of this roast, is our shade or whatever you want to call it. This was the intention of this was to intentionally roast the other girls, and I so I kind of liked it. I was all for it. Um, separately, um, so I'm going to give a serve mm-hmm. because I was going through this runway. Now, normally I will write down one or two that are my favorites. And I was like, I wrote down everyone's name. Um, and this was the Glow Up runway. Okay. Oh my God. That was amazing. That was some of the best work, some of the most wonderful garments, so many different choices and options that just, it was so fun. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking, I'm just going overall. There were some like really great highlights for me, but for me, the idea of this um, runway, whoever came up with it should get promoted. Like, mm. because not only 
Was it like, okay, you wear an outfit that lights up in some way, that's a glow up, quote unquote, but we're also going to turn the lights down and um, throw some smoke, you know, effect in, and then we can really kind of see it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was like, yas, because this was so just amazing, just so amazing. The lighting, the staging, the lights, the the things. In addition, the different choices the queens made. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just, I was genuinely in awe. I was awestruck between all of this because it was just so good. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, gosh, I'm trying to write <laughs> tags and also do this show. Um so I'm going to give a swerve. Oh. Um, and again, I'm doing being some very general things because while these two challenges were inter- very interesting and I said very unique. Um, so my swerve is to judging the dances. Okay. So in episode uh, nine. Nine. The queens were challenged to make viral TikTok esque dance TikTok. videos. They couldn't say TikTok. I know. <laughs> I know. Social media dances is what they kept saying, and I was just like, "Come on, just we know what this is all about." Right, right, right. right. Just, just stop. But uh, again, it was so the idea behind this. I got you know was like you're supposed to drink a dance, and you're supposed to make it to one of RuPaul's classic songs probably because they couldn't get the rights to do other songs. Um, or it was going to be super expensive to do it, which is fair. Or uh, it's just the self-feeding machine because now we are through how many regular seasons and now seven all-stars plus like the international, non-US base. I mean, like, you know, it's just a swirling vortex. So true. why not get more credit and more money because I don't know this for certain, but I wouldn't be surprised if Rue gets a penny for every single time one of her songs in her own show is Mm. played and heard because she gets rights for those as probably an executive producer and a writer and right, 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 honey. Get that coin, money, honey. Coin it, coin in the cup, like. Uh huh. So I'm like, oh, I'm not surprised that all of Ruth's yeah. music is the is the selections. <laughs> and to be fair, it makes it a little easier, I think, for the queens, because it's all one artist. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but granted, it's Mama Ru. But I mean, you know, yeah. like if, if they had all been Cher or another gay icon of some sort, which you know, random pick from a from a bucket kind of thing, that could have also worked i think it would have been messy if they all had different artists different songs to pick because then it gets i think that it becomes more difficult to compare right but that being said so with that being said though um back to this the 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 swerve Mm -hmm. um so the idea of it was to make a viral tiktok dance thing Mm -hmm. now again the the object being dance See, I was thinking the object was viral. Okay. Okay. And there it lies. So, there it lies the issue. Right. So <laughs> my kind of overall point with this is, I, yeah, I'm just gonna say it. I don't understand why Jinx won. It's our top two. Let me get wrong. Let me get it twisted. Like she was top two. She didn't mm-hmm. win. I understand why Monet won. Monet's was very fun, although her dance didn't go into... Her dance was really good, but that was a really awesome like dance moment that they were doing. I don't think it was the same thing that she was talking about when she gave the quote-unquote instructions. Mm-hmm. So, having said all that, I just don't think Jinx's was that amazing. But that's because I focus on the word dance. Mm-hmm. Whereas when you think viral... Okay, it kind of works. Um, I'll get to this. Well, not I'll get to her in a minute, but I really felt like Shay's was 
actually a dance that I could see people doing. Okay. Um, even Evie's, in a sense, was kind of, I could see other, like, people doing it again and again and again to kind of learn it because it was kind of a kooky fun like moment Mm -hmm. um some were just kind of bleh vivians um but like it's just those like when i'm thinking of this op this idea so i'm kind of like why are we why did we praise jinxes so highly when all she did was make a peanut butter sandwich Now, did I laugh at her her video? Absolutely, mm-hmm. but I laugh more at the comedy aspects of it. Her fuck, you know, fucking with her son, quote unquote, and having this like those moments. I laughed at those things because I get th- I get why those are funny. I actually laughed at the end when the son kind of skids in and like pours, I guess, I'm hoping milk on him as like this thing. But mm-hmm. I just it, I don't think it was as entertaining as as it should, could have been it wasn't entertaining enough for the win i'll just be honest i don't think it was entertaining enough for the win or the top two okay that's me i think that's a case of production either intentionally being obtuse or difficult or unclear mm-hmm. or again it goes back to production and they like put words in a hat or in a bowl and just pulled them out and like tried to use that like an improv style to come up with a theme Mm -hmm. of a challenge um or they thought this was trendy at the time that they filmed it but they didn't realize maybe they were being very clear which kind of goes back to my first point i mean the thing for me is is that anytime it gets wonky it's usually production is the issue but what we don't know is production being intentionally the way it is or because we've heard many a time from others via um like we mentioned in pre-show roscoe's or interviews um Mm -hmm. when the nda expires queens reveal things like last minute changes Mm -hmm. um that when they got their you know rundown like the the theme concept is worded one way and they go that direction and then when they arrive there they find out no it's actually a little bit more like this and then when it airs it's like a third version and right that's how rue announces it and everybody's like well if i'd known it was that mm-hmm. like you know so i sometimes i think they kind of screw around with that and we haven't really seen a lot of that in all star so it's really difficult for me to gauge what happened right with the dance like a drag queen thing other than I felt a little bit like it was a filler episode mm. and not that memorable. It just really didn't seem to be all that challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It was, so, it, was a, it was a unique challenge where it could have been, it was kind of a hit or miss. I'll put it like that. Like, again, while I, again, like I was saying, I was praising the innovation Mm -hmm. of this kind of challenge because no offense, we all, we're all a little tired of like, here's a, here's a makeover challenge. Here's a ball challenge. Here's a make a gown challenge. Here's a comedy challenge. Here's a movie challenge. Like we're kind of like, we, we know a lot of the tropes that the show falls into. And this one was a little, this one was different. Right. And I think if you're going to go with a traditional one, you need to put a twist on it that people aren't expecting. Right. So as an example, if they're going to do a makeover challenge, since there was an even number of queens all season, I think they should have made each other over. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I think they should have like, you know, taken how at the beginning of episode 10, there was a randomized aspect Mm -hmm. to the selection process for the lineup for the roast and use that to pair each other up and then they mm-hmm. had to um do a makeover of the other queen like themselves right do you see what i mean so like yeah it's it's a version of something we've seen before but it would be alternate or different and i don't ever expect to get credit for that or any coin thank you world of wonder there's an idea <laughs> so but you know my point is is that you know it, it still it goes back to production thing so i i hear you when you say the judging of the dances was kind of questionable mm-hmm. but the judging has been questionable 
all season long. Oh, yeah. Now, according to Bussy Queen, shout out girl, um, who literally, as we're recording this right now, just dropped their latest video. Um, because I got the notification pop up. Uh, Bussy has said that, um, where was I going with this? I've already lost my train of thought. Um, within the, the, the show that there's been like oddities and different things. And I thought it was Bussy. I could be wrong that there has been criticism. No, no, no. I stand corrected. I think it was on race chaser podcast that Willem and Alaska were discussing. They have firsthand been told by either production or people who were involved in it. I think the Queens that there was criticism this season from the judges and it was filmed, but they have intentionally edited this season to not give them criticism. Really? Which we are used to in the regular seasons. Right. So that was a choice and that's a production choice. And there's a part of me that's like, okay, I get it. And maybe they're doing this weird dancing thing because they're all winners and they're worried about backlash and world of wonder doesn't like want to be put in the hot seat for, Mm -hmm. you know, crap that's going on. I mean, look at what happened with Violet Chachki in fashion photo review. Rumor is that she like pulled the ultimate stunting on world of wonder and was like, pull all the videos. I want nothing with it. I guess her and got Mick turned around and ganged up together. And world of wonder was like, no, we, we already filmed it, blah, blah, blah. We already paid you. And I, according to what's been reported online, got Mick and uh, Violet, we're like, we'll give you the money back. You can have it. You will, we'll give you the money back. You paid us to do that. Mm. We don't want it aired. End of story. And I was like, bitch, like that's, that's right. an ultimate stunting to, to pull right. one over on World of Wonder and be like, absolutely not. Like, we're not doing this, which honestly probably would have ended up in litigation and in court, which I probably actually would have been interested to see how that played out. But anyways, mm-hmm. sidebar, you know, all of that. The, mm. the thing is, is like, you know, they've been, they've been doing some things different this season and some people have really enjoyed it. I'm kind of mixed. I think it's been a good season. We're down to the last two episodes. Um, mm-hmm. I have some other thoughts I'll get to later. Uh, about how things have been going, but you know, yeah, it it is what it is. Yeah, I can, I can, so I can understand and value the respect given these queens because they're all winners. But Mm -hmm. on the flip of that, um, why can't we give that respect to every season? Or maybe all stars? Because we know they've been through all of this before. Okay, I think that's fair. Your your latter part about like doing it with all stars, I think that's totally fair. That maybe in all stars they pull back on the criticism, and maybe on all winners they pull back even more. But I still think there should be some left in the edit. In mm-hmm. a regular season, I think the idea is over the course of the season they want an arc out of a out of a contestant to show that they've changed, that they've been listening to the judges, that the criticism actually manifests in them being a better contestant right aka a better drag queen so by the time they get to the end we we as an audience feel vested in them and we feel that they've listened to the judges and they've actually made marked improvement right the that's another that's a discussion for another show Mm. (laughs) so yeah um so with that what about you yeah so um i want to give serves to the two runways for these two episodes what lies beneath and all glowed up as particular runway themes um, now, I still don't know why my brain is doing this. When I heard that it was going to be What Lies Beneath, mm-hmm. my brain twisted it into Death Becomes Her. <laughs> so I thought they were all going to be like these kind of kooky, wild, like post mortem, like presentations. Okay. And that was not it at all. No. <laughs> Which is quite comical, like how twisted my brain got about it. Like when the first queen or queens start coming out, and I was like, wait, what? Uh, uh, oh, oh, got it. We decided to make the runway all about reveals, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like that that was a theme. I have serious thoughts, though, about what came out. Okay. Well, I again, it was you know it wasn't very straightforward for the queens on what the expectation was. So some queens I felt did true reveals. Other queens just kind of changed the way they look a little bit. 
and you and I have kind of discussed this before. Mm-hmm. Baby, taking off a jacket is not a reveal. <laughs> taking off a skirt to show pants is not a reveal. Like, you're just removing a garment piece. Like, it's it's not a, like, if it's a reveal, I want to be surprised by the element of what's coming. Don't, no, 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 no. This is not shade. This is fact. No, no, no. So. <laughs> I still think it's shade. <laughs> well, I want to be wowed. So when, the, so when the Vivian comes out and everyone keeps going ooing and aahing about how she has this gorgeous cloak and she looks like she's the witch from Into the Woods, the Broadway musical. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But she isn't. And it doesn't work. Because the cloak is showing the top of the dress that she's wearing underneath. Right. It's not a reveal. She also doesn't look like a hag that turns into a beautiful, like, you know, yes. woman. Like, so I was like, uh, it's pretty, but not yeah. effective the way you want it. Should have borrowed the outfit from um, her nameless, fuck her left, nameless left, Alexis Michelle. Mm. Yeah, there's a, there's a, I don't want to call it viral, but there's a video online. Uh, that she did, a, I think, a So You Think You Can Drag, I think it's a show. Okay. And she did the um, uh, song from Into the Woods. She did kind of the witch's thing. She was, she had this mask on and this big old cloak and shit. And then she, like at some point she spun and the mask came off and she was gorgeous and it all revealed mm-hmm. into this gorgeous gown. Right. So that's the reveal. Right, 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 right. So like Jada Essence Hall. Right. Girl, props to you because I uh-huh. really thought that was stunning. Um, was it flawless? Eh, not exactly. No. It's it's either you didn't rehearse it enough or just in the moment, unfortunately, it didn't 100 yeah. percent execute the way it wanted to. Mm-hmm. I was amused by the fact that the judges were like, where the fuck does she get a fascinator? Like, Because <laughs> even I was like, wait, what? I was like, oh, bitch, bitch got extra things like, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, you know what I mean? So, like, there were some there yeah. were some really good things um, and then yeah. kind of in between and then some not so good. So yeah. but anyways. Yeah. As a runway, I thought that was really good. And then also the old glowed up theme. I was just really pleased with it. Like this most recent episode, honestly, was probably one of the best episodes, I think, of the season. Mm. Not only just the challenge, but also the runway. Like I finished the episode and I was like, God, I feel so good watching Mm -hmm. this particular episode. and, And I get it. They all cannot be an episode 10. Right. There has to be some some better, some not so better. You know what I mean? And, and, and so, yeah. Anyways. Uh, swerves. Kitsch. Um, and this is very specific. It's a nitpicky one thing. Um, Evie Oddly's glow up runway. Uh-huh. That gown. Honey, I want to see it in person. I want to see her perform in it. I want to, like, be blessed in the gorgeousness of that gown. Right. Evie, you're never going to hear this. Don't you ever do that stupid glowing mouthpiece thing again. That was the dumbest (laughs) thing I've ever seen that she has this thing in her mouth and it's kind of rainbow and whatever. Uh And I was like, this is not a rave. This is not the white party. This is not, this is not Kings Island or any amusement park, like glow up, you know, Mm -hmm. after party thing. I don't know what you're doing. Stop it. Yeah. Cause it was hideous. It went nothing with that gorgeous fiber optic like gown. I was like, I don't, I don't. So right. I was like, yes, it's mushrooms and that's Evie and that's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Like, Stunning. The mouthpiece was too much. It was it was it was kitsch that I didn't. It was want. it was too yeah. It was it wasn't an if it had again, like I'll put it like this. And I'll say this nicely. No, I won't. Fuck it. Um if it had done if it had been the same color as everything else, and throughout the number, throughout the glow up, the walk, mm-hmm. what have you, she had never opened her mouth. And then when the lights opened or the lights went down oh. and you know, all, we saw all the lights and like the lights in the hair and then she opened her mouth and you had this glow out of her mouth right. of the same color. Right, 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 right. That is why 
this is shitty. Right. It's because That's... you have all this blue, all of this one color shit all over you. Yeah. And then you throw this thing in and it's different colors. And yeah, it, it, does, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't match. It doesn't no, connect. It didn't go with it at all. It reminded me of what little kids get when they're like at an amusement park and the sun's going down and the park's still open and they got those carts walking around and they're selling mm-hmm. that that crap. Yeah. Um, that's exactly what it, it reminded me of. And I agree with you. Like what I would have loved is if there had been something you know that was more fiber optic looking as a light and like had glittery kind of as an effect or something but mm-hmm. anyways so that was a swerve from me for kitsch and then also i regret to say that monet celestial was a swerve it's not her fault completely mm-hmm. because it's a gorgeous look it just doesn't present well on the runway however <laughs> mama Lights on your shoulder and lights on your hips and lights in the dress and the gown does not make a full, complete look. Your corset up to your chest was not lit. There was no lights. No lights, mama. Like, so there was like a little poofy thing here and it was kind of cool looking. And then there was a lot of dark and then there wasn't like, then the lights were down below. And I was like, what happened? So Mm -hmm. either it was intentionally made that way, which is, that's where my knock is. That's why it's a swerve. Or... It's shitty that I'm seeing it as a swerve because whatever the element was that was supposed to work didn't work because mm-hmm. I couldn't see it. Right. So right. Not, that, not that great. Um, yeah. And then uh, Nerve. Uh-oh. I, oh. I, I made reference oh. to this in, in the Telegram chat. <laughs> if anybody had seen the episode, they knew exactly what I was freaking out about. Um, and we have a we have a little audio piece to go with this. Please welcome to the stage the president of the Kennedy Davenport Center Honors, Wintergreen. Good evening. The stun of all stuns. Right. I am. Oh, my God. I screamed so loud. I'm sure my neighbor heard. I lost my mind the moment that name left Rue's lips. And I was like, see, I got goosebumps now. Like, I was so freaked out and I was like, I have been waiting seasons for the return of Wintergreen and it was not a disappointment by any means of the imagination. So I will own, I didn't get to watch the episode until Saturday. Okay. And the one thing that pissed me off more than anything else in the world, I wasn't spoiled a whole lot on this episode, but I was spoiled on one fucking thing. Oh. And I was so mad. So mad. Now, don't get me wrong. When I watched the episode, I still was like, oh, oh, oh my God, that's still really pretty. But like, I I was like, of all the things to throw out there, and I'm blaming whoever it was on fucking Twitter that did it. Like, can we could, could we have kept that quiet for like 24 hours? Could we have kept that just a little quiet? I don't think it's really possible anymore. So many things like that, right. that, that whole like respectability about two or three days, yeah. I think has really gone by the wayside. Like total sidebar, the latest Marvel movie, Thor, Love and Thunder. Mm-hmm. The day it was released, people were talking about it, recapping it online with spoilers mm-hmm. included. Now, to be fair, they were all saying like, you know, spoiler ahead or whatever. But I was like, my golly like it's the day like could you right. not even wait like you know a, right. a whole day but obviously not like no. it, it's now this like co- competition thing and i get it if if this is how you make your money mm-hmm. like that's like, one if you thing. want the clicks and i know you want the links and you're you're, you're an influencer right, right, right. or what the fuck ever but like yeah. i was so like it was 
I don't want to say devastating. It was just, it just punched me in the gut and I was so fucking mad. Aww. And now I was able to kind of glance through off of thing, some things. Because fortunately, um, I saw, I mostly saw uh, just pictures from the honors. So like, okay, I saw Shay's look. I saw Jinx's look. I think I saw uh, Raja's look. Like just quick little scenes. And fortunately, I was able to kind of like veer past it really quickly. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, as I was like trying to scan through thing, I think it stopped and it stopped at this point where, and it was literally just like a picture and it said, OMG Wintergreen. And I was just like, <laughs> and it was short enough that my, I, like I can, like if I'm trying to read and I see that it's a drag racy thing and I haven't watched the episode, I can do my best to like jump past it. But if I'm quick, like if I just like my eyes had to scan, I had to get something to get me enough like mental like flare up to be like RuPaul, don't look at it. RuPaul's don't look at it. Now you know <laughs> now why I, know. I created yes, a I whole do. different profile because honestly, a lot of that shit does not get spoiled. Lucky you. Well, it's not a hundred percent foolproof. People still post shit like. You know, some of these gays on Twitter, I don't know they're in a drag race, but that's how I find out because then they post shit and I'm like, God damn it. Like, God damn it. now I got to hide keywords and, you know, blah, 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 or they uh-huh. reshare things or whatever. So, like, two of the queens apparently had music videos that just came out. I did see one of them. I thought it was amazing. Uh-huh. Um, I haven't seen the other one because I didn't know the other one came out with it. But that's, like, how much I've kind of blocked a lot of that. But Right. So... Anyways, yes, this was a big, big deal. And I'm sorry to hear that it was um, uh, spoiled for you. But yeah. I will say this. Um, for those of you that don't understand why Wintergreen is such a big deal, you need to go back and watch the season with Peppermint. With Speaking of makeovers. Yeah. Um, and, and, and maybe it was a zeitgeist. Like, you needed to be there. You need to live the moment. Yes. Because I'll be honest, when they showed that flashback footage, I was like, ooh. I was like, the camera does not look good. In that moment, <laughs> on Peppermint and Wintergreen side by side, they look very shiny. They look very metallic. I was like, I don't know what happened, but yeah. Season nine, um, crew better work. Yeah, I remember the title. And so, if you have not seen that episode, then you may not understand why Wintergreen was such a big deal. I also loved how nobody knew about Wintergreen except for Rue, apparently. Right. Because when Rue said it, Michelle was shocked. Ross was shocked. They didn't show Ronan as the guest judge's appearance. But all the queens on the dais on the stage were like, wait, what? And my favorite part is how they were all trying to face front to camera. And I don't know what the story was. Like, if they were all corseted so tightly or whatever. But, like, nobody would turn. Like, so (laughs) I see Jinx literally is, like, trying to push herself up to twist to look to look at the queen that's about to walk down the runway or whatever. It cracked me up because I was like, dang, like, like. I wonder if they were just on like they were on just like chairs as opposed to like a stool that they could swivel. Oh, that, that's true. That could be. Yeah. Anyway, but still. Yeah. So I can, do, I can do this at least within my chair as I'm sitting at it. Right, 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 right. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, the return of Wintergreen. That was nerve. Like some of the best ultimate i'll talk more about it later but anyways right um we ready to move on sure thing okay All right, so it is now time for Snaps and Eye Rolls, a.k.a. the hits and the misses, also known as the highs and the lows of these two episodes that we saw. Damon, who are you giving snaps to? So, (laughs) uh, this most recent episode of Untucked was quite wonderful. The guest person aside, who, uh, to be blunt, I don't fucking know who that is. Um, I know he cute, he kind of cute and all, but, like, and apparently he's a journalist. Oh, whatever. I don't know. But, like, yay, you're here. But, like, and, and you're going to touch on something earlier, um, later. But okay. for me, the funniest moment is 
So they're playing two truths and a lie. Okay, so this right? is an untucked. Untucked. They're playing two truths and a lie. Right, because there is uh, no drama this season. Right. Very, like very, very little of it. So they're actually giving the queens things to do like games, which harkens back to early seasons. Yes. In the lounges that they would mm-hmm. give them stuff to kind of, you know, do. It's been a right. long time. So, yeah. yes. So, so, so kind of... they, they have a f- furry pink box. Pink furry box. And uh, so Trinity, of course, makes a couple quips or whatever, but she says, oh, this will be fun. And she says that they're all supposed to tell two truths that a lie, and then the rest of the queens have to determine which one's the lie. Right. So one of the people, Miss mm-hmm. uh, Monet, indicates, like, one of her quote-unquote, one of her truths was that Someone in the cast and her have her, kikied or kai kied. Mm-hmm. They have, they have, they have, they have, they have fucked, according to her. Now we, she didn't say it was recent, to my knowledge. I don't recall. I don't think she said that it was something that happened basically during the recording of this season. But she indicated that her and someone had kai kied. Mm-hmm. And the funniest moment to me, Jada goes off. Jada goes into full investigative like <laughs> reporter mode, trying to dig and figure it out. Jada Essence Hall is the epitome of the gif of Jessica Fletcher for Murder, She Wrote, eating popcorn. She right. is all up in this shit right. and is not going to let gonna this go. go. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and they're at, she's asking around. She's trying to figure out who did it, who done it, who done it, who done right, it. Right, right, right. And they asked Raja, and the funniest moment, the, the funniest line ever, Raja, the, um, Jada asked, Raja, did you fuck Monet? And uh, Raja says, I don't know. And <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> I bust out laughing because it is just it is so on brand it is so just hilarious like I don't, I, I don't know like it just it, there's so many layers to it because there's the well Raja's kind of old right she's quote unquote old she's older like whatever so maybe she forgot <laughs> then there's the whole later. Well, she we know she's a. I love having, you know, some some Sauvignon Blanc or other wines and and you know what have you. So there's that part. Right. There's the we know she's a she's a fan of the ween. Um, <laughs> right. She she enjoys an edible. She yes. enjoys an edible. So we know all of these things. And then finally, there's just the whole like. She's been around, so I don't know. Maybe she did, maybe she didn't. And it's just that kind of level of hilarity. Now, I again, I loved it. I thought it was wonderful. I was laughing my ass off. But the good thing is, the weird thing is, we technically didn't get an answer. We don't know who it was. Correct. We did not get an answer, but we got an insinuation. And... Mm-hmm. A mislead. Mm-hmm. Remind me and I'll tell you that in post show. Okay. Yeah. I don't have a pen. I can't write shit down. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so my snaps is to this just wonderful moment of comedy that we were getting because this again, we're in this all stars, all winners kind of moment and we're not really being very shady or there's not really a whole lot of drama. Mm-hmm. So we're like having these moments of just like hilarity. Um, because they all kind of really know each other well. Right. These are, in a truest word, kind of sisters. Right. Agreed. And that is kind of the fun part of it. They're able to laugh and joke and play with each other mm-hmm. and have fun because no one is going home. Right. So they spent, they basically spend this entire time together. Right. So there's okay. that. Okay. Yeah, that that was a that was a funny moment. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> what about you? Um, well, if you haven't figured it out, I am a stan for Wintergreen. Right. In several ways. Um, so uh, there's also this, because, Mama, if anyone's going to get an award for this episode... This is the moment that I think someone should be given an award. After a long night of hooking, <laughs> Trey didn't like the session. So he had gutted me <laughs> and set me on fire. Oh. But you know, I didn't die. No. no. I had crystallized. Oh. And now I'm a Glamazon bitch ready for the runway. Yeah. Can I get an amen? Wintergreen delivered <laughs> such an epic recreation of the infamous Kennedy Davenport explanation about her look on the runway that is probably notoriously one of the worst looks <laughs> ever to have graced the runway. And I was so proud of her that she acted beautifully in that delivery and I was like, how many times did you rehearse that? How many times did you watch that clip? Right. Like, who coached you on this? Because, you know, Mama, take them out to dinner. Like, give give them some recognition. <laughs> they did such a good job. I will say this much. I was so in awe of, of Wintergreen, this, this episode, and Untucked and everything, because you've got to realize, like, you got to think for a minute. What we know of Sarge mm -hmm. is, like, he's been a cameraman for years. He's been there for probably a lot of the moments of Drag Race. We don't, well, I don't know, I mean, we can't, it's going to take too long right now, but I think Sarge has been there for nearly all the seasons. Right. Of U.S. and yeah. now All-Stars. So yeah. I, don't th I don't think Sarge was there in maybe seasons one and two, maybe not three yeah. But it's probably a safe bet to say that Sarge has been there since season four, maybe, which means mm -hmm. Sarge has been doing this for like a decade. Right. And as a camera person, Sarge has seen so much, but Sarge also has absorbed like a sponge mm -hmm. so much about the art form of drag and the attitude. That is the part of what makes Wintergreen Wintergreen. See, I got goosebumps again. Because Wintergreen <laughs> is one of the shadiest, like, like so self-referential, like, self-centered mm -hmm. queens, but not in a mean way. Like, the infamous, like, moment they showed in the clip where, you know, you look beautiful. And she's like, I oh, know. No. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I'm like, you know, for a person who is presumed not to be gay, baby, like you, you, the attitude, the attitude. Right. That is. So like, we do find out in Untucked, I'm going to throw this in there. He is married to a woman. So we, I did find that part Married? Out. He said married, his wife. He said wife. Oh, I thought he said girlfriend. No, I think I heard wife. Okay. Because I wrote it down. Okay. I wrote Sergeant married to a woman because it, it, it blew a lot of, um, Fantasy. Um, never um, oh, no, no, no. My fantasies of blowing are not gone, baby. I'm just going to say that <laughs> for the record right now. <laughs> just saying. And besides, I mean, it, mar married means nothing. Not, married means married just means you've chosen to live your life with another person like for, for the rest of your days. That's fine. I'm not asking for I that. Mean, I mean. I'm not asking for a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> not asking for a time. I'm not even asking for a night. I'm not minutes. even asking for an hour, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> Give me 10 minutes. so yes, Wintergreen on stage and Untucked are who my snaps are for. Um, I don't have a clip, but in Untucked, the Queens kind of run roughshod over production and <laughs> nearly, you know, demand mm -hmm. that Wintergreen take a seat. And so right. they do have a stool because, because Sarge as Wintergreen is in full geesh. Mm -hmm. Behind the camera. And Trinity is losing her mind because she cannot look in that direction at that camera because she keeps seeing Sarge in as Wintergreen as opposed right. to the rest of the crew. The camera crew is always dressed in all black. 
for right. production. And so she's like, there is a drag queen. Now, honestly, one of the best things said, and I thought it, and the fact that these queens are so shady, but funny, like in the best way. And they were like, it looks like Ginger Mints behind the camera. <laughs> and I was like, they're not wrong. They are not wrong. I was, I was so amused. It was the red hair, honestly, you know? Um, yeah. Um, it was a very yeah. good, um, uh, choice i'm trying to find a fucking episode there it is <sighs> Quit better work. okay i was trying to find someone something else but i couldn't find it okay oh well but yeah i was i uh having having sarge there and having him in as wintergreen recording like still working basically was like just magic. Yeah. Just magic. And and what I loved about the an untucked moment, if you didn't see untucked, you really should. Um listeners You're only viewers. getting half the story. Well, in this particular case, not all the untucks are that exciting. And but in this case, I mean, that. the first section of untucked is Sarge as Wintergreen having a seat and living the fantasy, but also beautifully giving credit to all the work that goes into the art of drag. And the challenge and the difficulty of being a person who has only done it a handful of times now. Um, I can't feel my, I can't feel, I can't feel my ankle. Uh, my ears are hurting. I've got a headache. Right, right, right. Like big. she's, she's, she's running through all the classic things that you know, people put them through if they're you know, especially uh, portraying a female, you know, as a queen as opposed to a king. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you you basically morph your body. In various ways. Um, I mean, technically, women do this to present themselves as women, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. But when you spend years, decades modifying yourself, it, like you may think that this just comes with the norm. But the art of drag is actually spoofing, representing something. And like because you don't live like that, quote unquote, you therefore go through the pain, basically. Right. Of, of presenting what you present. So yes, snaps to Wintergreen yeah. on stage and on talk. Thought it was thought it was just great, just great. And I've really yeah. appreciated that Wintergreen was fully done up for Untucked, right? Um, as opposed to being switched back to Sarge. Um, uh huh. I thought it was interesting. Apparently, this all started at five in the morning. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm I want to see the behind the scenes of that. I want to know who who did the hair, who did the makeup. Who right. did the body? Like who who was involved in that? I'm very curious. Yeah. So, but anyways, those are my snaps. Moving on, Damon. Who do you have eye rolls for? Oh, let me see what I wrote down because I <laughs> forgot. Um. So, okay, and I'm gonna I'm calling this an eye roll, but it's not really an eye roll. It's more of just an observation because I'm kind of tired of it. Um. Well. So I think I might have a clip to go with this oh. first. Just well, it's one of our. We haven't heard this one in a long time. What the oh. fuck are you doing? Here? <laughs> <laughs> what? So okay, so I'm gonna just say I am. I have loved Shay for years. I mm -hmm. loved her on her original season, season nine, shout out. Mm -hmm. Um I loved her in All Stars five. Five. Yes, five. Mm -hmm. And I'm loving I've loved her I've kind of loved her here. Mm -hmm. And but the issue for me is she's kind of faded away. Mm -hmm. We got a very strong beginning for her, mm -hmm. literally the first episode. And since then, it's just been whoop, 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 just kind of going away. And we'll see moments for her. And when we get to this challenge, where, like, again, I talked about episode nine, where I was kind of like, what the fuck? Because I thought I loved Shay's dance, and I loved her video, and I thought of the videos, hers was the best. Mm -hmm. um, one of the best. I will... Give props to Monet for literally taking Rue's idea and, and running with it. Um, good for you, girl. You you know how to play the game. 
That was shade, FYI. (laughs) 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 Or it's following instructions. Because when Mama Rue says to you, no, 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 that's not a good idea. This is the better idea. Monet even says, do not ignore what Mama Rue tells you. So right. if she course corrects your idea, you should take the hint. Mm-hmm. Like you didn't get to be a winner either on a regular season or on an all-star season to make it to the all-winner season to mm-hmm. not listen to what she has to say. So right. I thought it right, was right, right. very self-evident when that moment happened. I was like, well, Monet is probably going to go very far. Right, right, right. So with Shay, I've, I've felt like we had a strong beginning and then since then it's just been going, going away. Right. And I don't understand why. I don't, I'm not, well, let me, let me rephrase. I have an idea why, mm-hmm. but um, uh, I, I'm not happy with it. So as we knew what the, how the season was going, like there was never there, there was going to be only four queens that made it into the finale. Mm-hmm. So production wise, logistically wise, there has to be a either dark horse or there has to be someone that's struggling that's not going to make it. We know four won't. They won't be able to lip sync all that stuff. And I feel that that has fallen onto Shay's shoulders, in a sense. And it's unfortunate, but I get it. Shay has some very interesting like takes on fashion and runways and challenges. And I feel that that lens that they they keep uses is one of hers i think she does what she wants to do okay and while that's great in some ways and some aspects it doesn't always translate well into a judged competition mm. and that's where i think the even though like we've been we've been we've been knocking the judges for episodes regarding this and i agree i don't think they're judging really they're judging really well it's more like compliments after compliments after compliments and you know if race chaser is a thing where they indicated that they were getting critiques but they're not getting shown um that's where i feel like the issue is because there's someone like shay i'll put this out there in perspective since we're not seeing critiques and we're not hearing anything and we're not getting any of that information, we don't know what's being told. Mm-hmm. We don't know, and if, you know, if what, you know, Race Chaser is saying is accurate, if they are getting critiques and we're not, we're just not seeing it, that leaves us as the audience kind of in a lurch. Because I want Shay, I wanted Shay to win. She was one of the people when I, when this season started, I was like, Team Shay. Well, I mean, when the cast was, was announced. Mm-hmm, right. Right, I was right. like, oh, baby, we're in trouble. Right. Like, Shea Coulee is considered one of the penultimate queens. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she hasn't so far mm-hmm. in the season yeah. really kind of. And she gets these moments where she shines. Um, I'll use the, like, the most recent runway as a perfect example. That was beautiful. That mm-hmm. sunflower, that yellow all over. But... In the challenge, they kept, they did something unique. And while I think maybe whoever was producing this or editing this thought it was funny, um, unlike some of the other girls, she kind of, they kind of made her focus on one girl, and that was Jada. And she kind of did these like several jokes on Jada. And I was kind of like, I thought it was funny and I did laugh, but like after a few, I was kind of like, Mm, maybe we move on. Right. I, I agree. Cause she did. I think she tried to do the rule of three. Maybe she did four and they yeah. were all on Jada being a skinny little bitch. And when she did the second one, I was like, Oh no, here we go. I was like, don't, don't, don't do Mm-mm. this. Mm-mm. 
And and yes, for editing, I believe all of the queens had longer sets that they literally made at least one, if not two, jokes about every single like mm-hmm. contestant up there. But obviously, for time, they had to cut it down, right? Because the whole roast itself is roughly fifteen minutes um, that mm-hmm. we see, when in reality, it was probably longer. And mm-hmm. one of the things that Michelle revealed is that Jinx was so funny. That Jinx had to keep stopping to take a beat because everyone was laughing so hard before she Mm -hmm. would either move on to the next joke or deliver an even harsher punchline or whatever. Right. So. Yeah. And then, like, it just, it's just all of these, like, moments where it's shades kind of fall. Yeah. Um, She's always, almost always been early in, like, anything. She's like one of the first few, one of the first queens to kind of do things and runways and such like that. And I think that's where what she's doing gets lost. Mm-hmm. So I'm just I'm uh, as a queen who loves her, or as a queen who loves her, uh, um, I just feel like they've the production and what have you have given her the short stick. Now, we'll talk predictions in a, in in the post show. So I'll right. reserve the rest of my comments for that. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's where I feel. Yeah. I mean, the the sad reality is, is that she has had, she's only gotten one pin. So she's in last place when it comes to pins. She's had one block, one win, and only had like one financial, like, you know, $10,000 tip. And that is not where I think anybody, if they were betting in the house in Vegas on the mm-hmm. Queens and who was going to come out. They would have, I don't, I, many people I think would have said Shay was going to be in the top four. Right. And unless something changes in the next episode, she does not appear to be making it to the top four. Mm-hmm. So I think what I find interesting is I think Shay could have won this episode if she had done better in the roast. Mm-hmm. But it seems like she was reserved for the roast and I don't know if she was already in a headspace where she was doing the numbers game and realizing that even if she won, Mm -hmm. all she's going to do is tie with two pins. Right. And what that means. Right. So right, right, right. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're 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 quite accurate um, to say that she's been fading away basically this season. That you know, and, and I don't think anybody would have predicted that. Mm-mm. Definitely not me. Yeah. So what about you? Um. So I have eye rolls for this. This is kind of a production thing. I said no twists makes it boring. Mm. Now, I know some people might be like, but Gary, they took away the Platinum Plunger. Like, nobody got blocked. Whoop-de-doo. Right. Like, that's not really a twist. That's not, like, you know, oh, the All-Stars okay. rules have been modified or whatever. Right. Okay. 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 <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I feel one of these coming on. I've had it officially. <laughs> this. Why did we wait so long to take this away? Why didn't we do this a while back? Or do something different with it? Or make it two? Make it so that both queens that won, the top two, get to, to get to block someone. Why didn't we change it up, mm-hmm. you know, every once in a while? Like when we got the two, the two, the two queens that got two stars and gave it, they can give one away, why didn't we then do a flip on that and then like, oh, so we're now have, we have two platinum plungers. And y'all too, I was, I think Raja and um, Jinx at that point, like y'all didn't get to block two queens. Right. Right. So anyway, there's just this, there's just something that could have been done with this. Right. And now we're doing it now, now that every queen has technically been blocked, like woohoo, like mm-hmm. everyone knows what happened. Everyone knows how it goes. So yay. I wonder, this just popped into my head as you were talking. I, I, I was going to say to you, and you already said it, now that every queen has been blocked, that's why they stopped it. I wonder if the queens fucked over production. 
Mm. Maybe the intention was to stop the plunger, like the platinum plunger blocking earlier in the season, but they had to let it play out so that all the queens got blocked because from the gate, they said there's power in being blocked. Mm. And the moment that stunt started, then they had no control over what they can do with it because if they take it away and they stop it and a queen wasn't blocked, then the queen never knows what the quote unquote secret is. Which there was not. <laughs> right. We know that. Mm -hmm, Production mm -hmm. always knew that, but the queens didn't. Mm -hmm. So if they stopped like two episodes ago, there would have been, you know, what one or two queens who had not been blocked, who never found out. And then the queens would look even like shittier because they'd eventually have to reveal that there was no secret. There was no extra thing that it gave you. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if, if that was like a, a whole like messy thing that production was like, well, shit, now we have to keep the plunger going all the way until hopefully everybody gets blocked, which they did. Yeah. I don't know. It just it just popped in my head. I was like, wow, mm. that that was kind of unfortunate because here we are kind of complaining about you know, that 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 now that that's happened and I don't think it's a twist. I don't think it's a twist to take away the plunger. Right. I agree with you. Two two blocks would have been good within an episode. You and I already hypothesized and I guess it didn't happen that they multiply the number of stars. Mhm. Mm because I thought that would have been a thing. Yeah. Um, I would have, I, yeah, it just, it, they, I agree with you. This was kind of like, okay, I'll put it like this. We are pretty much at the pin ultimate episode. Mm -hmm. This is the last chance for the Queens to, 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 to do something and make it to the final four. Right. But we're one episode away. And the only thing that you have done to make this quote unquote interesting is you're like, oh, no one can be blocked anymore. And for a franchise that's known in the regular series, the U.S. Bay series, to have twists, mm -hmm. they were kind of lacking. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like the Platinum Plunger is like the chocolate bar. Like, it's sort of a joke. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't really have the impact. And maybe, you know, we're taking it too seriously and it's always meant to be campy, kooky, kitschy and... Mm -hmm. Like, we're putting too much into it. But there is a part of me that's like, yes, but the chocolate bar in 14, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. In season 14 was meant to save a queen that the drag gods would reveal the Willy Wonka wrapped bar. Uh -huh, you know, blah, uh -huh. blah, blah. Um, and we always called shenanigans from the beginning because we were like, there's no, like, secrecy, authenticity, security. Mm -hmm. And then we have the, you know, then we got the platinum plunger. I feel like the whole thing is just kind of like, it, it, yeah, it, it's still too subjective and questionable and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyways, no twist. I thought made it boring. Yeah. That was, that we needed something. Role. Okay. So that. we want to know what you think. I'm sure you have thoughts. There's plenty of ways you can let us know. You can go to our blog, comesoutloud.com, and you can comment on this particular episode on there. We'd be happy to read those comments. You can also send us an email, comesoutloud at gmail.com. You could even call us, leave a voicemail message with your thoughts. We'd be happy to play it on the show or just uh, play it and then uh, discuss it on the show, uh, but not play it, you know, for everyone to hear. You can tell mm -hmm. us that. Um, you can call 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. As well, you can follow us on social media, pretty much the mainstream things. Just type in comes out loud as one word and you would find us. Um, if you're interested in the chat, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash telegram. That's T-E-L-E-G-R-A-M hyphen C-O-L-D-R to join the chat on there. Um, if you would like to know about when the regular series of Cubs Out Loud, the main thing is going to be uh, recorded and aired live uh, for recording, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash calendar, that's C-A-L-E-N-D-A-R hyphen C-O-L. And if you want to support us, there's several ways to do it. First of all, we have merch. You can get some lovely things over at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. As Damon is showing, we have our own Drag Race logo uh, items. I happen to have remembered to bring my frosted oh, mug. Yes. 
Ooh. So it's a lovely frosted glass with the Cubs Out Loud Drag Race logo on the front, as well as the Cubs Out Loud, uh, you know, item across the back. Damon has a different version. His uh, coffee mug is the white with the pink interior and the pink matching handle um, that comes in, I think, uh, three different colors that mm -hmm. you can choose from. So in addition to drinkware, we have apparel and other items. Damon happens to be wearing a lovely baby blue T-shirt that has the um, Cubs oh. Out Loud Drag Race logo on it, which is the COL uh, bear head. Uh, with the tiara and it says drag race i happen to be wearing the um consent is my foreplay uh smashy series where it has the drag pride colors in it um included oh. so in addition to that you can also become a patron over at patreon.com slash cubs out loud for a dollar or more a month um and you actually get full episodes which we call include the pre-show and the post-show basically the bookends uh that we've alluded to in this episode if you would like to, you can just give us a tip. And the way you do that is go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. And for any monetary amount, you could just give us a donation. Uh, put in the comment that it's for Drag Race. So that way we know. Um, and we thank you very much in advance for that. <laughs> Drop some coin in that pocket. There you go. Drop some coin in that cup. Um, if you would like to uh, rate us on iTunes, of course, we would love any uh, of the online podcast things to have five stars and a lovely comment. Um, you can obviously subscribe pretty much anywhere that podcasts are found. For Cubs Out Loud Drag Race, it has its own RSS feed specifically for Drag Race. And Damon, if people were going to find you online, where would they go? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most bear related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work, but it does include my drag stuff because that's how I get spoiled. <laughs> if you would like to find me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. I do have a Twitter specific to Drag Race, which is GearBear73DRAG. Um, I don't really share a whole lot on there or like retweet anything. Um, it's more just for me to like couch things together. But if you wanted to reach me on there, you could. And with that, uh, we'll be back in two weeks after the finale has aired. We have a winner, baby. Oh, my. All Stars Season 7 All Winners. Who Until will be crowned? Then. Queen yes, who all will queen. be crowned? And win $200,000. So with that, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.